Usually, when I'm walking along the river or in the forest, um, I capture it moments, nature, beautiful color combinations and shapes. Usually, I search different ways every day. Um, I am Reda and I am a founder and fashion designer of a women's wear brand, sustainable women's wear brand, Reda Paula, based in a small Lithuanian city, Birstanas. I thought that inspiration is in a big city before, because I thought that inspiration is streets, arts, museums, and I can't create in a noisy places. I have to concentrate and think a lot. As I remember from my childhood, my mother and my grandmother, they love knitting and uh, crotchet. So um, I love, I said I love vintage uh, and secondhand uh, shops. And when I visit them, uh, usually when I see the napkins, I can't leave, I, I must buy. That's why I have a lot of napkins, old napkins, reused uh, napkins. So, and uh, I decided to, uh, to create uh, clothes from them. So this is the the top, oversized top with beautiful round napkins on a bag. This is the skirt from old napkins also, uh, transparent and with uh, with short skirt lining and this is the dress. It can be wedding dress also. I need to put this lining and with a beautiful handmade unique wedding dress. I never wanted to create uh, cheap and uh, cheap and fast. I, I never wanted to create for money really. I wanted to create for for expression for myself. <laughs> I use, uh, I, I use only my personal inspirations, but I, what I feel empiric, what I remember, what I see, and this is the pictures uh, that I, I took when I walk in my city in different seasons. And also, um, I love uh, old pictures from my family. Uh, this is my not grandmother, grand grandmother with a uh, so it's that she created, that she created. So uh, she loved covered bottoms. That's why for my new collection, I took the same idea, but in, in different uh, places. I put them in different places. I believe in, in a better future of fashion. I believe that I, I believe that there will be more innovative. In a, innovated fabrics and sustainable fabrics and uh, people will choose uh, local designers, fast fashion now uh, plays uh, greenwashing game <laughs> because overproduction uh, will never be sustainable so they lie a little bit they made small collections, like conscious, um, responsible collections. But on the other hand, they do a lot of overproduction from new uh, non-ecological fabrics, and uh, they produce in not in not ethical ways. This is the suit in the sketch from wool. This is very, very quality wool. Uh, oh, I can tell you, this wool, this fabric comes from bankrupted manufacturing. The fashion, fashion clothes are really cheap and in bad quality. And for students, for, for teenagers, it's okay. And, but if something will change, for example, the prices will rise, maybe it will be better because the, the workers, they will would get bigger salary, but I don't think so it will happen.
my name is Anna. I'm from Vilnius, from Lithuania. I have born and like I grew up here. It's my uh, beloved city, <laughs> the most beloved city in the world. I really love my city. And uh, I'm a founder and designer and uh, anyone else <laughs> of brand, fashion brand and dress. It's, uh, it's a fashion brand dedicated for dresses only. As I said before, we like uh, design and produce like cocktail dresses. So, so there are some um, more extraordinary, not, not very, you know, daily and uh, like simple fabrics. They are more like uh, we use sequins, uh, we use like shiny, uh, like uh, second finishes, fab uh, finishing fabrics. We have some. So that's like we as well. We use polyester and polyester viscose blends, and there are so many, you know, bad things about polyester. But I don't agree because there are so many good polyesters in the world. Quality and not so cheap, and uh, we try to to, to 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 pick those, you know, good quality polyesters. And still, you know, if you cannot afford silk, this costs like around 800 euro per dress. It's like we have a alternative for that. You think dresses made from polyester blends, and I find it very, you know, bad in general. And my journey, fashion journey, started maybe I don't know 20 years ago when I was 16. I remember myself uh, making some sketches uh, of dresses when I was like in the school, still in school. And then I, I, I didn't do nothing about uh, fashion. I studied journalist, um, journalism and I used to work as a journalist for like eight years. And then I realized this is not the occupation I want to like uh, have for my whole life. And I started to think what else can I do in my life. I had a, you know, this idea in my mind, I can do dresses, you know. And uh, after a few minutes, I had a brand name, it's like a dress. Wow, so genius, you know, I'm genius. <laughs> dress so simple, it's like, it's like this dress describes the main idea, idea of the brand, getting dressed every day. It's not about getting naked, uh, naked. It's not about undressing. It's about the process. We're getting dressed every day. I'm really happy our community is growing very fast. There are so many and more and more fashion brands, independent one, producing in small quantities, produce the, producing with like kind of social uh, like a labor responsibility. But still, you know, there are a big influence on the fast fashion at the same time. And we should compete, you know, with, with those cheap uh, cheap items you can buy for, for 20 or 30 euros. And there are more people coming here and saying that, you know, I want to invest in some cool, timeless, classy garments, dresses in our case, I can wear from year to year. And myself as well, I see how uh, I change uh, my style of buying things, you know. I almost don't buy anything. Okay, if I need jeans, I go and look for the jeans, you know, from time to time. But in general, I wear some dresses. Uh, I invest into, you know, timeless things like cool, quality good quality sweater or like uh, good quality jeans like a few pairs of shoes and that's all you need so i try to consume less it's a short dress made from uh, silk i bought it silk and stock fabrics in italy yeah i'm visiting i, st I started to visit stock fabrics like uh, companies as well to buy uh, fabrics left from like companies from big production quantities what is sustainable fashion in it's a trend. <laughs> yeah, but maybe it's, it's kind of cynical to, to, to tell it's a trend, but there is a, something very trendy in it. And uh, people are starting to talk about sustainability maybe like very actively, like five years ago or something. And then it was about um, certificates. So now we use fabrics with certificates. Now we talk about recycling. Now we talk about buying less. Uh, now we talk about giving you all to clothes for yeah, reproduction and so on. But for me, there is a lot of talking, you know, in this industry. Like everyone, like 18 times are, oh, we produce, we reproduce, we reuse. But come on, you waste so much water, you waste, you waste so much resources. You're still buying, uh, like, uh, like working labor for nothing. And for me, sustainability, it's more, you know, point of view. It's more about not, sustain, not just sustainability, but responsibility, you know. Because as, as I said before, we produce as well. 
So in general, if we won't sell it, we, it's it's a it's a this is a waste, you know? Yeah, we waste the fabrics, we waste money for for, for production, but still, you know, yeah, we're small, so we don't produce a lot, you know. So so we're not so guilty, <laughs> but we're trying to do uh, to do as much as we can sell. So, my name is Shuguna, I'm from Konas, and I'm a, an operations manager at a sustainable streetwear brand. Second-hand fashion is becoming more and more popular, I think especially, especially between the Gen Z, but the sales of fast fashion brands, they also never been bigger which means that we are not shifting to the slow fashion like secondhand fashion. We're simply consuming more. We use both, we, we buy fast fashion and we buy secondhand. I think that these days you can't even start a fashion brand that it wouldn't be sustainable. Like, I don't know, there's no person that would say, hey, let's just like, you know, create a new brand and let's make it unsustainable or we won't care about sustainability. No, all of them, like basically if you're a small brand, like you produce locally, you know, you, you don't have a lot of stock, that makes you like sustainable in, in some way. So yeah, so, so there are a lot of, a lot of new brands and uh, uh, besides that they're like sustainable in one way or another, um, they're also like really, really good at creativity, like the, like the whole brand concepts, the story they're telling and the designs and styles, like they're really, really niche and unique and, and yeah, and actually they're really inspiring because every day like I'm on Instagram and I say, oh, there's a new brand and then two days after, oh, there's also a new brand. So I think we're really like scaling up our game. And even though like there's not much, that much, you know, brands that are really worldwide known or like Europe known, I don't know. But uh, but like locally here in Lithuania, you can like you can find amazing businesses that like doing great. Greenwashing usually it happens in the like in the context of the big players, you know, like big companies. Basically, it's when the um, company markets their product as sustainable, eco-friendly, conscious, whatever, when actually it is not, the, or they just simply don't have the the proofs that that would you know support the, the, the whole statement about, about sustainability. Well, you always have to check the numbers, the facts, I don't know, maybe they have like their sustainability report, like, or annual report, their, what are their goals, their, um, I don't know, their, their mission and, and that kind of stuff. But all the legal things could shift the whole industry and make it actually sustainable if, I don't know, if it would be if it would be illegal to burn your leftovers, your stock, like if it would be, if you, if big companies would have to pay for their, I don't know, for their emissions, for the uh, chemicals that they leak to the environment and other stuff, we would be in a way better position. And as I was talking about the pace that, you know, we're going, then the pace would be much, much quicker. Um, uh, but the thing is that fashion is, is a business and business has a, its own purpose. Yeah, but they could solve, I would say, almost all the problems in the, in the whole industry. Okay, so what's my design style? Something like this. Colorful, bold, a little odd, if you will. Uh, so this one was inspired by feminism, basically, by uh, being a woman, what it's like to be a, a woman, and beauty industry. 
Uh, this one precisely speaks about how much do we want women to be more beautiful than they are. Uh, for example, when it comes to breast implants, we want it bigger, better, <laughs> bolder. So my name is Istina. My surname is Sam Kaita. What do I do in life? Mostly, I do fashion. I work in fashion and educational field. It's somehow blended together in a perfect way that works fine for me right now. I work in the in Vilnius Academy of Arts. I work as a sustainability teacher. And yeah, the biggest challenge for me was the size of Lithuanian fashion industry. It's very small, <laughs> the same as our country. I am always reading something unpleasant. For example, about um, labor laws, about how much we consume, about how fast fashion is bad for us, and it can create a very negative field of inspiration in your creative world. I know that fashion is the second one after oil industry that does all the injustice in the world. Uh, where do I see it? Everywhere. Everywhere starting from how the materials are made, uh, what do we do with water just because we, we want to wear something nice and uh, how much people get paid for a piece of work they spend many, many hours. I can give you one example uh, that became almost a joke as from dark humor side. Uh, you know there are agencies that forecast what color will be next year, uh, like so other people in the industry, industry would know what to create, what to create so people would buy. Uh, there's no need to use, to use that information from the agency. You just need to, to go to China and see what color rivers are. That's, that's the forecast, you will see. If, if it's red, we will probably have a lot of red next season. Yeah. Sometimes uh, sustainability is the main source of inspiration for me. For example, with this one, um, I, I just recently bought a sofa and it was plain without any fabric. So I bought a roll of fabric and then uh, took it to the man to cover it. And some fabric was left, so I made this one. Made a dress, you can see the seams over here, like it's not very even, but it's fine, it's a part of the design. Then some fabric was left, so I made a bag, so I have like... Sometimes I create until I'm finished with the whole material that I'm working on. If the prices are lower, we consume more, so it's just, you know, getting bigger and faster every day, consuming more and getting things cheaper and cheaper, and then dis discarding them and anytime, anytime we like. We, we have a hole in our jeans, we throw them away. Uh, we, we are not bothered to fix it, because what for if we can buy another pair of jeans for even cheaper than the first one? Like I said before, the way we make things, the way we produce things, we will need to plan in advance. Because right now when uh, production is made, people who are making production, they already know how much they will throw away. We won't have this luxury in the, in the future if we want to live on this planet. We will need to make pre-orders, we will need to plan everything so not a single item would go to waste. Well, I'm being very optimistical, but you have to when you're working in fashion. I guess what's missing is uh, mindfulness in this. We have to consume not because it's cheap, we have to consume because we really want that, we really need that.